the government is watching it very carefully because you we want a stable neighborhood now that Sheikh Hasina is no longer Prime Minister, the Awami League is out of power, what will happen? We have so many projects with Bangladesh. The world thinks that it was a quota reform movement, that the students movement. Actually, the students and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina have for the longest time been on the same wavelength. It is Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina who abolished the quota in 2018. And this year, when uh, in the month of June, when the High Court restored the quota, she went to the Supreme Court. So, and again in favour of the students, and student groups even joined the government of Bangladesh in going to the Supreme Court. After the clashes started, the uh, jamaat e islami has tried to take over the situation. So how do you see the situation? The situation in Bangladesh is very volatile today. Uh, you are right that Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina gave her resignation yesterday to the President of Bangladesh and she has left the country. She is currently in India and uh, the situation is evolving whether she would like to stay on in India or go somewhere else is for her to decide. Um, I think we have to watch carefully what is happening in Bangladesh. Uh, the world thinks that it was a quota reform movement, that the students movement. But actually the students and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina have for the longest time been on the same way Length. It is Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina who abolished the quota in 2018. And this year, when uh, in the month of June, when the High Court restored the quota, she went to the Supreme Court. So, and again in favour of the students, and student groups even joined the government of Bangladesh in going to the Supreme Court. So, uh, I think the students and the Prime Minister, uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's government, they were on the same page. In between what happened, that because there was a clash uh, uh, between the students and the Awami Chhatra League, so all the other political parties, the jamaat e islami uh, Shibir, uh, uh, which their student wing, the BNP student wing, they all came onto the street and there was complete mayhem, complete chaos, violence, deaths. In fact, uh, the day before yesterday, the leading paper of Bangladesh, Daily Star, published a report that they said up to that time, now many more have died because two days of violence on uh, Monday and Sunday continued, but up to Sunday morning, the um, reports were that 204 people had died and of them 53 were students. And the remaining were, you know, civil society people or police people, even the uh, law keepers who had been killed and so on. So I can, you can see from this that it is a very volatile situation. I think after the clashes started, the uh, jamaat e islami has tried to take over the situation. And now it seems that it is the jamaat e islami who controls power to the largest extent. Even within the army, there are talks that there will be a jamaat e islami group and they may be opposing the present chief of army staff who has been appointed by Sheikh Hasina. So there might be a change even there. So there is a very volatile situation going on. We've got news from outside Dhaka that there have been killings, temples have been attacked, uh, individual intellectuals and Awami League people have been uh, killed and hung from trees. So it's a very difficult situation. We in India, the government is watching it very carefully because you, we want a stable neighborhood. We want there to be stability in Bangladesh, we want economic development in Bangladesh, we want democracy in Bangladesh, we want the students to be happy. So, we are watching the situation to see that now that Sheikh Hasina is no longer Prime Minister, the Awami League is out of power, what will happen? We have so many projects with Bangladesh, we have economic uh, uh, interaction with Bangladesh, uh, economic projects, we have given, built so many projects in Bangladesh and handed them over uh, to the people. There's connectivity projects, there's education projects, uh, you know, health projects, so many. There's cooperation between the industries, between so many Indian companies have set up over there. So all that is very much uh, in, in continuation. We want it to continue because this helps the people of Bangladesh. And for the people of Bangladesh, they export about two billion dollars worth of goods to India. So obviously their in industry also will want to continue. So both sides, I think, are interested in uh, uh, continuing the economic cooperation, but we have to wait and see who is in power, who is controlling. Today, the name of Professor Mohammed Yunus has come up, uh, maybe as head of the interim government or as chief advisor to the interim government. All this is a matter of flux. Yeah. So let us see what happens. We support Bangladesh Army Chief Center already. Yeah. Now, yes, the chief of army staff who spoke yesterday, he said he is going to try and prepare an interim government and 
get the approval of the president. So there were many names, there are many lists which are coming out. Uh, somebody has one name, some lists have other names, but what is the final list? And uh, even till today morning, you know, there was an interview with Dr. Mohammed Yunus and there is talk that he will, you know, play a major role. He himself has said so. So we don't know. We have to see. Only when a person comes back, he's now in Paris, when he comes back and takes over. We have to wait and watch and see what will be the shape of the interim government and what will be the powers of the interim government. And certainly the army will play a big role because they are a factor for stability. They are trying to bring the situation under control. Uh, the police and the uh, paramilitary forces, they have been trying, but the situation had not come under control because, as I said, the forces of jamaat e islami uh, seem to be on the upswing. All the visuals so far point to that. Acting chairman of Bangladesh Nationalist Party on Monday congratulate to the student uh, protester from all the over uh, the country, Bangladesh Nationalist Party Secretary General Mirza Fa uh, Fakrul uh, Islam Alamgir has announced that uh, Tariq Rahman, the party acting chairman, will be returning to the country very soon. So, Yes, yesterday in that first meeting which they had, uh, including with the army chief, um, the one decision was taken that uh, uh, Begum Khalda Zia, who was the former prime minister and head of the BNP, uh, she was not in jail, but she has been under house arrest. She's been at her home because she's elderly and quite unwell. So the decision was taken that she will be released. So that is fine. But I understand that there is no decision yet on Tariq Rahman coming back. Uh, there is no decision yet on that. Uh, of course, the BNP is talking about it at the grassroots level. This is part of that uncertainty, part of the volatility which is there at the at the grassroots level. So there is no certainty about whether Tariq Rahman is coming back. Okay. Uh, John to politics says her son, Joy. Well, you know, in politics, there is never a goodbye and there is never a welcome. You know, politics is a very complex situation. Uh, you know, you make your own way in politics. Now, um, um, of course, Sheikh Hasina is no longer the Prime Minister, but Awami League is still a force within Bangladesh. Awami League, easily 30-35% are the people who support Awami League. Mm. You know, so I think this is something to be looked at. And and uh, what will happen to the Awami League workers on the ground? Will they reorganize themselves? Will they recoup? I think this is a uh, point to be watched. Mm -hmm. Will the party dissipate? Will it stay together? I think these are big questions. We have to watch and see. Yeah, Modi chaired a cabinet meet, uh, committee on security meeting briefed on Bangladesh situation, ma'am. So uh, how do you see this, ma'am? Mm -hmm. Yes, I've seen some visuals about the all-party meeting and uh, there were some questions about how did the coup take place, who is behind it. External Affairs Minister said that this is being looked into and, you know, naturally at his level he would not want to say prematurely uh, anything about, uh, you know, how it has happened. It is the agencies who must be collecting information now and giving it. So it is a good thing that the all-party meeting has taken place because Bangladesh is a very important neighbour and all the political parties will want to know what is happening, what is how is the situation going to develop. It is important that all the political parties keep on the same page. So I'm go I'm glad it taking it's taken place and I hope there will be more discussion and there will be exchange of information on what is happening. Sheikh Hasina son said that we risk ending up like Pakistan, urge forces to prevent unelected government in Bangladesh. <laughs> uh, there is talk, a big talk about um, uh, uh, Elections, the big talk about elections and the very setting up of the interim government, the purpose normally is to uh, prepare for the elections. Now when that preparation, how long it will take, last time a very similar situation was in 2007 and 8 when there was an army back caretaker government. The army took two years to call for the elections and even the people uh, said very clearly they want democracy, they want elections. I can, I'm sure now too the people, the students, they all want democracy and elections and we hope that there will be a short and quick path to elections being held. Disturbing uh, reports are also coming from Bangladesh uh, of attack on Hindu uh, homes, temple and individual. Yes, yes, I have seen visuals. I have seen interviews on the TV with uh, ISKCON. Uh, located in Chattogram. I have seen interviews uh, with various individual Hindu families whose homes have been burnt and vandalized. They have, some have died, uh, some intellectuals have, been, have died. So the kind of attack taking place, not only on the Hindus, but on um, uh, Islamic liberals, on, uh, you know, on, on uh, intellectuals, is very reminiscent, reminiscent of what happened in 1971 in Bangladesh. So I think this is a, a very worrisome factor. I hope it comes under control. The army is supposed to have put out a telephone number where you can ask them for help. Mm -hmm. So we hope that comes under control. Did you see, uh, 
of the uh, Bangladesh situation? Of the Bangladesh situation. You know, the overall impact is, is very serious. We want to have a, a uh, situation where the matter is under control, uh, where uh, we go back to prosperity and growth. You know, Bangladesh has been growing substantially. There's very major developments over there. So all that is there. And, and uh, we want that to continue. But at the moment, it's very volatile. I, I can't say what the future impact will be. But we are worried in India about the impact on the neighboring regions of India. So, you know, yesterday there was a curfew declared in a 200 meter uh, range across the border with Bangladesh. So, in all the neighboring states, there's been a curfew for that 200 meter step. I don't know whether the, how long that will continue, whether it will uh, remain or be withdrawn. I, I suppose we will hear about it. Uh, but it shows how concerned we are. And we want the situation to come back to normal as quickly as possible. And right now, in the situation has been so volatile, nobody has been, uh, you know. To, before that, no, well, of course, we have, uh, Indian government has said, she came to India twice mm -hmm. in the month of June. We saw that uh, for the swearing-in of Prime Minister Modi's government and for a bilateral visit in the third week of June. Mm -hmm. So all that has happened. She's come twice in June. And maybe China is the country that's got upset because of that, because she insisted on coming to India first before she went to China. So I think that, uh, that uh, all these... Um, Inst instances are there, they are being assessed and studied and now let's see what comes out.